I think it's in Corinthians. That his first convert on the Greek mainland was Stephen. So we can take Stephen as a kind of archetypical Gentile convert. Here, I think it's here, 1 Corinthians 9, 16. And I also baptized the house of Stephanus. Uh, but I think there's another reference to him. Again, I'm not sure where I got the first convert. He calls him the first fruit someplace of Achaia. I don't know if I can find it here. I have got a Kleenex. I seem to be getting a bit of a running nose for some reason that I didn't start the day with. I can't find it off. Oh, uh, here it is. The end of 1 Corinthians. But I beg you, brothers. Thanks a lot. If you give me two, it might help. <laughs> you got extra ones. Uh, one may be a little bit uh, too uh, optimistic. <laughs> a line uh, 1 Corinthians 16 5. But I beg you, brothers, you know the house of Stephanas, that is the first fruit of Achaia, devoted themselves, and there it is, to the ministry of the saints, the Aconion. Of, they were the people taking care of the saints in the Greek mainland. That's where they get this from. That's where this is all from. And the diaconin is the key to, you know, sorting out. And uh, I have it in great detail in my forthcoming book, more about this word, which is also used by Jesus at some point uh, repetitively, and I can't remember offhand the episode. So, uh, I rejoice at the coming of Stephen. Oh, well, it's a Pauline character. He's inserted here as going to be killed by Jews, mixing that with the Josephus. But the only thing that really happens here in the history of the early church is that James is attacked by Paul. That's, to my mind, according to Sheps, what really happens what's really happening here. And this is all uh, 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 an anti-Semitic substitution. So uh, how do you know? Well, let's get on with it and we'll see what we, uh, what we make of this. In any case, so, so Stephanus is one of these seven. And uh, okay, that's the end of that one. Line seven, a great multitude of priests uh, came over and were obedient to the faith. So suddenly we get conversion of a lot of priests to Christianity. So many people converting that there shouldn't be any problem with hostile uh, 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 assemblies. Now we have a great number of priests. Anyway, forget all that. Back to Stephen. The narrative has introduced Stephen, which it never did James, as if Stephen is important, but James is not. Stephen is important because he's someone Jews persecute according to this presentation. James is unimportant because he's a Philo Jew and he's uh, someone who cares about the Mosaic Law. So we don't bother introducing him. Anything we can do, as Josephus put it in the beginning of the, uh, of the uh, Jewish War, to, um, how does he put it? When he's talking about the defect of history writing in this time, Vilify the Jews and uh, what flattery. is it? Flattery of the Romans. Huh? Flatter the Romans. Anything you can do to vilify the Jews and flatter the Romans, that's the order of the day. Uh, sorry to say that. Any Christian minister who wants it, or a rabbi who wants to take issue with me, is welcome to do so. Okay, let's get on with Stephen here. Full of faith, power, work, great wonders. Now Stephen's running around making miracles, etc., with everybody. And there's now certain ones, usually the sum, certain ones, line nine, is, the, is uh, the sum from James, the certain ones from James. Sum is usually a relation, is a usage relating to enemies of the, of the writer. And they're from a synagogue called the Free Ones, the Libertines. And there were Cyrenians, Alexandrian Cyrenians is uh, North Africa, Libya. Alexandrians, Alexandria and Cairo, Silesians, Asia Minor, they're all now it's supposedly debating, attacking Stephen. Now these are the Hellenists now, they're attacking the person who's the archetypal. It's not making any sense, any of it. Uh, but they were not able to resist. Then secretly urged men on, saying, We've heard him speaking words, blaspheming Moses. 
Ah, uh, okay, here's the blaspheming charge against James that we get in the execution of James later on. Now it's Stephen blaspheming Moses. Why would Stephen be blaspheming Moses? What's he got to do with Moses at all? So these people, somebody, whether it's these Alexandrians or the certain ones or the some, are stirring up the people. So everyone, the people, the Sanhedrin, the priests, they're all together on the same side according to this narrative. Well, that's not the way the situation was in Palestine at that time. People were fighting the high priest, fighting the Herodians, and so on. So the attitude of this is, this is so, who would write this? Someone overseas who didn't know anything about the historical situation and didn't really care. To my mind, it's someone in Alexandria. Uh, there we have a great record of uh, Greco-Roman anti-Semitism coming out of Alexandria. Uh, Philo's mission to Gaius is written against such people who go to the Roman emperor and complain about the Jews in Alexandria and want them to, we want the emperor to withdraw the privileges, in fact, execute them all if, if he will. And uh, Josephus and Philo even named some of these people who they were. I can't remember who their names, but there's someone called Appian and a few other uh, people who went to the emperor in Rome uh, to do this kind of um, uh, propaganda that Philo goes, and Philo's no tremendous nationalism. He goes and tries to defend it, uh, to, uh, stop this from happening. So to my mind, it's circles like that that produce this material. People who are really uh, got a thing about uh, the situation in the Middle East would be like having the PLO write uh, the history of uh, Zionism or something. Well, that's what not the, that's a very good parallel, uh, actually. Anyway, or some of these other uh, propagandists you hear on radio or TV who are describing, uh, you know, why the Jews have to be put in their place and why Israel is the cause of all trouble in the universe. And they set up false witnesses saying that he blasphemes this holy place and the law. Well, that's what Paul is accused of doing. So this is a Paul type person. Paul does do things of that kind, but the real blasphemy charge is the is against James. So I'm going to mark this blasphemy. And Josephus makes that clear. But I think the reason James is accused of that is going in the inner sanctum of the temple, as I told you, pronouncing the forbidden name of God, which is what the blasphemy charge in the Talmud is based on. But I don't think the people were against James. In fact, as we get the early church text showing it, that he was a very popular leader, and I don't know. This Stephen character is sort of a Paul type of uh, you know, a person that would be treated the way Paul, according to the problem Paul runs into. Anyway, we now get Stephen speaking before the Sanhedrin. Why a convert from overseas who's a nobody would be called before the Jewish Sanhedrin?